Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. This is an introduction to analysis, in particular research methods. Um, this is a feature of um, a 10 mark question on paper one and paper three, possibly a 20 marker on paper three. Um, so a common question that students and teachers often ask and I hear it um, quite a few times is how do we show analysis in our answers? So hopefully this video tutorial will explain what exactly that it is and give you some examples of how it might be used. So knowing what analysis is, is very important as marks can be gained on most of the extended answer questions. It's part of the AO3 assessment objective, which is on most questions. The only ones that it isn't is the four mark and the six mark on the full A-level papers. According to the Napier Press textbook, this is where I've got this from, um, which was the Web um, et al um, textbook. They state that analysis is breaking down an argument into small parts to show how it fits together. Um, it also means showing similarities and differences or comparing and contrasting um, of views um, of an issue in a question, looking at it from different viewpoints and having a logical answer with a clear introduction, logical chain of reasoning leading to a relevant and um, relevant conclusion. Um, still, students struggle to see exactly what they have to do. So I have put together some examples of analysis for research methods just to give you some ideas. So example number one, in 2017 paper one, the 10 marker, which was question six, asked for outline and explain two practical disadvantages of using documents. So some of the analysis points that you could have given were things like um, the practical problem of being hard to access. Um, so something like a document such as a painting, like what Erie's used, so you can apply an example. What he used in his study of childhood, the painting might be in a private collection. So getting access to that is problematic, which then might lead to another practical problem, which was time consuming. It might also be in a collection which is in a museum, which you've got to pay to get access to. So then it leads to another practical problem, which is cost. So that's what we mean by analysis initially. You're, you're sort of saying, um, here's one point and it leads to another point and it leads to another point. You keep digging deeper into the issue that you're trying to explain. Um, sticking with those paintings, these might pose a further problem because usually only the wealthy could um, afford to have paintings. So it's not representative of all childhoods. Um, a second one, you might need specialist skills. That could be another practical problem. That could be paragraph two. Um, and that can be time consuming. So if you used Thomas and Zanecki letters, um, the Polish immigrants in um, America, you might need specialist skills to read it. Words, phrases change over time. So this then leads to um, a theoretical issue, which is validity. So we're digging into it, we're digging deeper. Validity is also questioned as the letters were in Polish. So translating the letters might lead to changes in the meanings. And also, Thomas and Zanecki, what they did was they advertised for these um, letters to be sent in for you, for you, uh, via a newspaper. So this adds to the cost. So basically what we're doing, we're digging deeper into it. Okay. Um, making comparisons. So another thing that um, was mentioned was that making comparisons with other documents. So instead of relying on documents that might be in a museum or a private collection, a solution might be to use a public document because they're already available. Likewise, um, using a historical document might have, be hard to access. So compare it to a current document. Um, another example. So another possible um, question that you could be asked, ethical problems of covert research. Um, you may in ethical problems of covert research, which um, would include deception, consent, confidentiality, harm to the participants, even to the researcher. So in terms of lack of consent, um, Griffin, Black Like Me, Patrick Gangs, White Street Corner Society, they all had a lack of consent. And basically what that does is it leads to deception. So if you use the example of Griffin, an uh, example of covert research, he didn't gain consent to the people that he was studying, which was the experience of black Americans. And that further led 
them to believe that he was actually black himself when in reality what he did was he was a white guy and he um, used sun lamps and medication to make his skin darker and that deceived the people that he was researching and likewise choosing not to gain consent outright means you have to try to get into the group instead so that means that the research becomes a bit time consuming um, the, the researcher um, then has to pretend to put on an act so that leads to further ethical problems in the fact that it's quite um, uh, what's the word it's quite stressful for the researcher um, likewise the participants might think that you're their friend and that brings in more ethics what happens when the research finish how do you leave um, so you get your problem and then you dig deeper into it and you make links that way um, deception Patrick with his study of the Glasgow gangs pretended to be part of the group and that led to him having to take part in legal activities which is another ethical issue which means then he has a moral dilemma which is does he report it to the police does he keep their confidentiality practically this is emotionally demanding on the researcher um, another example would be white for example going back to normal life was seen as quite stressful for him after living with Italian emig emigrants so he meant that he found it hard going back to normal life at Harvard after 18 months of research um, and another way that you can analyze is that you could offer ways to overcome all these issues so for example you might debrief them at the end um, but again this could also be problematic if the people like the gangs become angry or violent towards the researcher when they find out that they're being researched on um, a final example that I'm going to share with you because this is only a quick video tutorial um, you could be asked about research design so one of which is sample techniques so you could be asked to outline explain two sample techniques using sociological research one paragraph could be random sampling so you explain oh well one one method could be random sampling this means you pick it out of a hat and then to analyze it you can then say well this is used by positivist it's seen as quite a detached method it's a scientific method it's done at random there's no bias um, in choosing your participants um, it tends to be quick um, and especially if you use a ready-made sample for example the um, electoral register which is what Wilmot and Young used in their research um, is a really good quick method to get a sample and it's good to get a large sample which then makes it more representative um, on the other hand snowball sample so you make contact with one person which recommends somebody else and the sample grows and to analyze this sociologists would use it in sociological research because it's good for hard to reach groups perfect for deviant groups so then you can refer back to the previous one which was um, the Glasgow gangs for example um, but the problem is the people that ta started to take part in the research tend to be a certain type of person which might not be typical of all the people that you are interested in research so this method tends to be more time consuming because you're building on your research not getting your ready-made sample like what you would with um, a random where you're picking out of a hat but it tends to be favored by interpretivists which have a different goal in mind they want validity they want the access to the hard to reach groups and uncover the meanings that those people attach they're not interested in applying it to society as a whole they're really interested in looking at those small groups and those small cross-section of people um, in their research so overall when exploring issues in research methods consider the point that you are making and then try to view it from a different angle or dig a little bit deeper some teachers recommend you say well this means this um, and then a consequence is this and this leads to this they might you know using those prompts break the point down further so from making a generic point about the method experiments interviews documents statistics and so on explore further knock-on effects of the research and as part of the analysis it's also okay to link to other issues if it logically flows so for example a practical issue may also lead to an ethical issue and this will explain why a range of pet issues appear on mark schemes even if the question is only focused on one what I mean by that is when I was marking for paper one and it was asking for practical issues 
validity, um, and reliability, representativeness appeared on the mark schemes, which are theoretical issues. And that is why, because it's part of the analysis. Okay, so overall, this has tried to give you some examples of how to analyse research methods. Um, massive thank you for watching. If you have found it useful, please click like. Um, any questions or comments, please pop them below um, and check out some of the other videos. They might be relevant and have a fabulous day. Um, and thank you again for watching.